And all right. So 5003 uh, task is found on page 16. And uh, again, once again, I am pleased to invite uh, Second Lieutenant Brett Seidel, uh, the DOU for Southwest Region, uh, to talk about to us about this task. Afterwards, we're going to have a bit of a Q&A. Uh, the nice thing is, is that we do have Major Walker on tonight. And that's his job, is uh, variables of Im image composition and composing an image. And so any questions that you might have, he is going to be here to, uh, to answer any of those. So um, I'm looking forward to, to, uh, to that information as well. Welcome to task 0-5003 from the Civil Air Patrol's SUAS task guide. We'll be learning how to compose SUAS imagery to CAP standards. In order to do that, we need to discuss focal points, what they are and why they're important, rule of thirds and how to apply it in cap missions, framing, how to size up your shots and fill the frame, ground control stations, how a knowledge of your drone's control systems gives you an edge during composition, zoom, when to use it and the differences between digital and optical zoom, and then aircraft intrusion, which give you practical solutions to keep aircraft propellers and landing gear from intruding on your shots. We call the main subject of a picture the focal point. It's generally the largest and clearest feature in a picture. It's also the place where the viewer's eyes are drawn towards. That could be a downed aircraft or a breach in a levee. Here is the number 12 helipad at the center. We've brightened this image to help pull out some hidden details. It's crucial that you know the exact focal point your customer wants to see. Otherwise, you risk emphasizing the wrong details and delivering a bad product. Uh, remember, this will reflect poorly on CAP by extension. And imagine the potential for confusion or failure in this scenario. There's neighboring heliports in the area. What if you accidentally wrote down the wrong number? Heliport 10 instead of 12. What if you lost situational awareness and chose the wrong heliport? Now, the quality control process in a two-person team is usually better than single pilot resource management this is one of the reasons why CAP requires a two-person team at minimum. While you should generally try to limit focal points to one per picture, the customer may ask that some of your imagery contain two focal points. In this scenario, landslide rubble has hit two different locations and the customer wants a good shot showing both at once, along with any cars trapped between the two points. Following that, they've requested we get each area individually with increased detail. A useful tool to help you frame your shots is the rule of thirds concept. Outside of CAP, rule of thirds gets applied to photography as a way to think about pictures artistically. Inside CAP, we use the rule of thirds concept more narrowly by using it to help us line up our focal points, fill the frame, and check our horizon. Now to use this tool, imagine that the picture here is divided into nine pieces, and your target or focal point is required to be inside the middle box, or at one of the middle box's four corners dubbed the sweet spot by CAP. Now our focal point here was the marina, which is being surveyed for damage after a hurricane in the region. Because this image is composed properly, you can easily tell at a glance that everything looks okay. There is a way to overlay that grid pattern on your images to help with framing. Doing that requires a basic understanding of what a ground control station or GCS is and how to work with it. The procedure I'm about to show you works with many DJI drones, but even if you're not using DJI, you may still have this grid feature somewhere in your camera settings. And drones like the DJI's Mavic Air are piloted through a ground control station or GCS. In this case, our GCS is comprised of a tablet running the DJI GO 4 app connected to a controller, which is then paired with the Mavic Air drone. And then to your right is the main flight interface of the DJI GO 4 software. And you need to add navigate to the camera settings button here. Then go to the gear icon and choose grid. Add your grid lines, and now the cardinal is divided by nine squares. 
This grid is an on-screen display only and does not transfer to your actual photos or video. If you need to include the horizon for context in your shots, CAP says it should never be more than one third of the total photograph and it needs to be straight. And our grid overlay helps us to determine that this photograph has passed the horizon check. Now your gimbal settings can help tremendously with keeping the horizon straight. Again, this is DJI specific instruction, but the concepts are transferable. You can see on the left, gimbals in follow mode will attempt to keep the horizon straight, even if the drone is maneuvering. Now on the right, gimbals in FPV mode will mirror the drone's tilt. Here's DJI Go 4 again. Get over to the More menu. Then get to Gimbal Settings and Gimbal Modes. Now you can switch between the two. In CAP, we always want to fill the frame with our targets, up to but not exceeding 75% of the total frame. For reference, 7 out of 9 squares is 77% of the total frame. Anything unrelated to the target can be thought of as dead space or dead pixels. So by maximizing your target up to 75% of the frame, you naturally minimize the dead space surrounding the target. And the picture of the river and the bridge is from a hypothetical sortie to get imagery of the support structure on our side of the river. The pilot did center that structure, but look how much dead space is in this photo. Because the drone doesn't have a zoom lens, the pilot must fly out towards the structure and descend till the subject has filled the frame. Be wary though, there might be unseen hazards as you descend closer to structures. They've done a good job here filling the frame and centering the focal point. Cap says you should first frame the image without zoom, then use zoom to further enhance framing or to focus in on a specific part of your target. So if we had a drone equipped with zooming camera, from here we could zoom into the top of the structure and take a look at the left beacon. Blurry images won't get us anywhere though. Our photography needs to be crisp and clear. Using digital zoom is what introduced the blur here. Digital zoom enlarges pixels but does not magnify the actual target. Side-by-side -side comparison between optical and digital zoom helps clarify the difference. Digital zoom crops out portions of the photograph, enlarges the center pixels, and adds some filler pixels, but the process lowers overall resolution. Optical zoom moves lenses towards the target, magnifying it while retaining resolution. Now let's dig deeper into optical zoom. CAP's 2019 op plan briefing showed us the push package concept. These crates are filled with the drones and supporting equipment necessary to facilitate many SUAS teams responding to a disaster event. The Patrice 210 RTK made by DJI was one of the drones included in these push packages. It comes equipped with a Z30 camera, which has 30x optical and 6x digital zoom, for a combined 180x total zoom. Let's get a clear idea of what 30x optical zoom can do. Watch this spot here. At this range and with 30x optical zoom, you could see ants on the tree. Definitely a powerful tool. Just remember to frame your target first without zoom then zoom in on specific features or details the customer wants to see. We're putting a ton of work into producing a good shot, so the last thing you want to happen is parts of the aircraft intruding on your photo or video. Now, this shot was taken with a Parrot Bebop 2, and those are propellers in the shot. Aircraft intrusion can happen for many reasons. With this Bebop 2, we have a hardware issue that can be solved with software settings. You can see this camera is a fixed 180 degree fisheye lens. 
And you definitely don't want to get stuck cropping out propellers from the image. And even if you did, the horizon still isn't straight. This is where strong knowledge of your GCS is important. We're basically using the same GCS setup, but this time running Parrot's Free Flight Pro app on the iPad. You got to get into camera settings, then choose JPEG mode instead of DNG mode. All future pictures taken will now be auto cropped with a straightened horizon, fitting our CAP standards of image composition. Here's another scenario where software settings may be giving you problems. The Mavic Air's gimbal tilt limit extension is turned on, meaning the gimbal can travel another 30 degrees upward from horizontal. As we look up at the ALO picture, you'll observe a propeller intrusion. This tilt limit extension may be an advantage though in some circumstances, providing the customer understands uh, propellers will be in the picture. For instance, the tilt extension may enable you to capture upward facing photography or video of a certain point on a structure despite having a hazard directly above you. But unless you're inside those very specific circumstances, turn off your gimbal tilt limit extension button and limit your camera's upward travel to horizontal. We're back in DJI Go 4 to turn tilt extension off. Get over to the More menu. Go to Gimbal Settings, then Advanced Settings. Here's your tilt limit extension button. Turn it off. Now we're good to go. Aerodynamic forces may be another reason why aircraft intrusion is happening to you. In our scenario here, the drone is flying towards you and the camera is pointed at you. Then we've maneuvered with clockwise yaw and are heading in a new direction. So the drone is moving down this new heading, but due to mechanical limitations of the gimbal and the influence of aerodynamic forces, the gimbal has a recovery delay before it points in the right direction. You can see how the landing gear can easily intrude during these recovery periods. This is why prior to taking photographs, it's usually best to let the drone stop and stabilize after maneuvering so the gimbal can fully recover. If you're forced to take shots while moving or if you're taking video while moving, just be aware that maneuvering slowly will reduce aerodynamic forces and limit the chances of aircraft intrusion. Of course, if you're using something like the Inspire 1, it's been engineered to overcome aircraft intrusion. Raising the landing gear up and above the camera gives you a full 360 degrees of unobstructed view. Thanks again to the artists on Unsplash for some great content. Uh, pause here if you want more information on sourced imagery or the reuse clause for this class. Well, thank you so much for joining me in class today. Go ahead and click that like and subscribe button to let us know you're out there and that you'd like to see more of these classes. Look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. All right. So he did such a great job that I've got nothing to add, <laughs> to be quite honest. So any questions on that? And uh, again, any questions, what you saw, if there's any uh, questions of a uh, specific nature that you might want to address to uh, to Major Walker. This is easy, geez. Yeah. Now, is there anything that you could add to that? Like I said, I, based on what I, I mean, what I know, and and I'm working on it, as I said, on a cap uh, schedule. From a professional standpoint, was there anything that he missed that you might want to add to the add to? Uh... Uh, there are two things that just popped into my head first. Um, someone was just about to say something, but I didn't see who it was. That was me. I, I can wait. Okay. Okay. Um, so the first thing uh, when he talked about uh, putting the the grid lines on your uh, your flight app on the GCS. Um, 
that is a really good practice. I have that set up in a couple of different things when I shoot. Um, and uh, I don't, we moved from starting with DJI stuff. Now we're, we've got the Skydio. So I don't know if that's available on Skydio. Um, I kind of assuming it, it might be because it's a pretty standard thing. Um, but it is a really good idea to have that set up, especially if you're new to, you know, any kind of imagery. It helps you um, especially find that center spot um, really well so that you can um, get in there and then, uh, you know, figure out how much is filling the screen and how much you need. So definitely that's a great tip. 